This is your WCIA 3 forecast first. Hey there, thanks for joining us here tonight. Boy, it's been another mild day out there. Very nice, but yes, cloudy, overcast. We didn't see the sunshine much, and that sun is something we probably won't see a whole lot of over the next several days. But at least on the flip side, the temperatures are very warm. And we're going to stay mild here tonight. You can see these mid-40s that we're at right now from Champaign to Springfield, even still 53 down in Effingham. We're going to stay in those 40s pretty much all night. But going to watch out for some fog, some drizzle, some rain the next few days. But these temperatures are going to get even warmer for us as we head towards Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We'll show you those numbers and those rain chances when we come back. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. Tis the season for travel. How the state is trying to make it easier. Plus, police have made an arrest in a convenience store shooting, but the search for suspects continues. And a reminder to move over in order to save lives this holiday season. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. Uh, we're coming from eastern Tennessee, uh, right down on the Cumberland Plateau. People across the country are taking to the roads for the holiday weekend, including in central Illinois. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. Jennifer is off tonight. You may not have noticed much traffic last year, but this holiday season, officials are warning those roads could get crowded over the next week. WCI3's Bradley Swank is with us now. So Bradley, what did you see while you were out there today? Whether you were leaving the state or coming to visit, it's safe to say you'll hit some kind of traffic. At least that's what I saw while I was out there today. Some travelers tell me for them, traffic wasn't all too bad compared to years past. Going through uh, Nashville was smooth as silk. Uh, traffic was very light, connected with uh, 24 onto uh, 57. And so far, everything's been going smooth. This wasn't always the case for Patrick Lineski. He and his wife make the trip to Chicago from West Tennessee every year. Usually take 65 up. And uh, we've been having a lot of trouble with 65 with the detours and that going through Indianapolis. After years of making the same trip, they feel like they finally found the quickest route. He's not the only one who is headed to Chicago for the holiday. Coming from Arlington, Texas, I just moved there from Los Angeles, and we're going to Chicago, Illinois to visit my cousin. For people who may not have hit the road yet or are taking a break on the way to their final destination, I talked with IDOT spokesperson Maria Castaneda to get some holiday travel tips. Here's the biggest takeaway. Just to give themselves extra time, you know, pretty much to expect the unexpected. She says to pay extra attention, attention around construction zones because workers may be around even if they're out of sight initially. All right, Bradley, thank you so much. Traffic was backed up this morning on I-74 in Champaign at the 57 interchange. State police say it was caused by a single car crash. They say the driver went off the road and hit a guardrail. Both lanes were back open about an hour later. State police say no one was seriously hurt. IDOT is temporarily reopening most lanes in construction zones to help with traffic. This has been done for years around the holidays. The pause in lane closures runs from tomorrow afternoon through Sunday night. For a list of the work zones that are not reopening, you can head to WCIA.com. And state police are using today to remind people the importance of moving over for emergency vehicles. This is called Scott's Law Day. It's named after a Chicago firefighter who died after getting hit by a car on the side of the road. This move over law is designed to keep emergency workers safe. The law says you need to slow down and move over when you see a vehicle with flashing lights. And if you get caught disobeying, there are major consequences. And they face a fine of no less than $250 and no more than $10,000 for that first offense. Um, if the violation results in injury to another person, the violator's driver's license is going to be suspended. Um, for a mandatory period of anywhere between six months to two years. The law doesn't just apply to emergency vehicles. You're required to move over for any car on the side of the road with its lights flashing. Hazard lights count as well. And here's a look at what the numbers show. Last year, state police recorded 15 Scott's Law-related crashes. There have been 22 so far this year.
Other news tonight, a teenager who was shot at a Champagne convenience store has been arrested. 18-year-old Randy Willis faces preliminary charges for aggravated discharge of a firearm and unlawful use of a weapon. It all unfolded Tuesday at Golden Hour convenience store. Police say Willis exchanged gunfire with another person, and that's when he was shot. Police say a third person also started firing. Investigators are still looking for those two other suspects. There's much more detail on this story on our website. Area hospitals are reminding people of visitor restrictions as they try to slow the spread of COVID around the holidays. St. John's in Springfield updated its rules for the second time in less than a month. Patients are now limited to one visitor, except for kids who can be seen by two guardians. Carl, OSF, Memorial Health, and Sarah Bush Lincoln are also restricting visitors. Details and additional guidelines are on WCIA.com. Here's a look at the latest COVID numbers across the state. There are over 18,000 new cases. Another 78 people have died and the positivity rate has jumped again. It is now at 8.6%. But there are new developments in the fight against COVID. How a second pill could keep more people out of the hospital. Also tonight. It'll be two and a half weeks of high anxiety. It's the most expensive scientific device ever sent to outer space, where it's going, and what it could teach us. Kevin loves oh, the man, space that's stories. Stuff. That's a really cool thing. Uh, like, next best thing since the Hubble, of course, which was like, you know, in the 90s. I thought and you were so. going to say sliced bread. Wow. Because <laughs> that's the phrase. <laughs> But no. <laughs> trying to tie in the, the NASA stuff Yours there. Yours makes more sense. Space, yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. Let's talk weather because we can both <laughs> understand that one a little better, I think. <laughs> 51, 29, warm temperatures. And they're going to stick around and we'll talk more about it coming up. Now, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Lighty. All right, a windy next few days setting up for us. So we've got south winds gusting over 30 miles an hour tomorrow. We're going to have more of that as we head into, looks like Sunday, some big time winds there. So gusty, but very warm. Those south winds are helping to kick those temperatures up for us. A lot of cloud cover. Didn't see the sun today. Don't expect it at all pretty much. I don't know, for almost a week. Not exaggerating that at all either. It's going to be very cloudy and rainy. 47 in Decatur. It is 50 in Mattoon, 53 in Effingham. And we're going to stay mild 
all night long with these temperatures that hover pretty much into the 40s through tomorrow. And there's Jess. She's dancing away. She's enjoying her Christmas Eve. <laughs> is that what you uh, dance like when it's raining? <laughs> is, that, is that your raining? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> what, 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 is what that this, the same dance that you do when... Yes, when you is. dress up as an elf too. Okay. That, that's the same. Day. But we're curious. <laughs> Look at how big my hands are. <laughs> <laughs> Your hands are pretty big. Very skinny, skinny, <laughs> tiny legs, like toothpicks. There, it looks like as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Love it. What would the dance be if it was snow? Who knows? But I will tell you this, it is going to be a rain dance because we've got a lot of rain in the forecast uh, here coming your way on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Day as well. But at least the temperatures are going to be mild. Look at this, topping out near 60 degrees, but again, a lot of wind in there. Uh, let's show you also the big temperature difference that will set up on Christmas Day. You could be at 48 in Watsika, 61 in Effingham, somewhere in between there in Champaign. Uh, big front kind of hanging across the area. So that's why it's very difficult right now to kind of really nail down what the high is going to be for Christmas Day. We talked earlier in the week, hey, maybe we break a record. I don't know if we're going to quite get there, but we're definitely going to be very warm. But look at this. This is 3.30 in the morning on Christmas Day, 6.30 in the morning. Pretty good chance of widespread, kind of moderate rainfall that's going to be around. So uh, Santa coming in on a rainy note for sure. He grabs his milk and cookies and throws us down the forecast, which shows 59 and rain showers around, especially early on Christmas. Let's take a look at some travel impacts here. Looking at the country here, the green is good. Yellows, reds, not so good. Notice those are more along uh, the western portion of the United States. Uh, winter storm heading out there in the higher elevation. So if you're going to uh, parts of the Rockies there, they may be encountering some rough weather. So if you have to travel out that way, connect in Denver, uh, you know, if you're connecting in some uh, areas there uh, to the west, they're going to have some worse weather than what we're going to have here. But we are going to have our own fair share of rain at least, but it is all rain. No snow, no ice. Look at all the rain chances. All of these are rain chances that go well into next week. As temperatures also stay pretty mild for us, we've got readings here into the 50s, still 55 by uh, the middle of next week. Now, I will just throw this in there. There's one model hinting at maybe a few snowflakes by next Tuesday, but that is probably going to go away as well kind of how the pattern has been for us. It's been just rain. So 45 tonight, 59 tomorrow, patchy fog. You got some mist, you got some drizzle tomorrow. Kind of an overcast day and then the better chances of rain early on Christmas Day. More rain Sunday night into Monday, more opportunities into next week. So we're starting to turn on the spigot when it comes to rain, but still nothing in terms of accumulating snowfall. It's a shame because you're all decked out for the right. holiday. You're ready for the snow, a white Christmas. But. Yeah, uh, red and green Christmas. Yeah. No white. We didn't do our best matching today. That's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> yeah. Where were you at on there? Leaving I think out? I said yesterday, at this point in the pregnancy, I wear what fits that day. She goes up. This, and there were no holiday work? dresses left. Does this work? Great. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? You have a holiday something I could throw on, right? I do have a jacket. Maybe we'll maybe, break. Maybe break in the, the second half of this newscast. We'll break out the Christmas jacket for her. All right. I'm excited. Kevin, thanks. Brett Barons breaks down the big Illini win in last night's bragging rights game. Plus this. A million miles out, something goes wrong. There's no call in AAA. How far into outer space is $10 billion machine plans to travel?
from your local news leader, Jennifer Roscoe, Jessica Coons, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Whitey and Brett Barron's on sports. You're watching WCIA 3 News at 6. NASA is counting down to a Christmas morning launch of the new James Webb Space Telescope. At $10 billion, it'll be the biggest and most expensive science instrument ever sent into space. And it could help answer some of our most pressing questions about the universe. But as reporter Mark Strassman shows us, hundreds of things have to go right before that telescope can capture a single image. From its perch a million miles beyond Earth, the James Webb Space Telescope will glimpse the dawn of time like nothing before it. The universe is this 13.8 billion year story, and we're missing some key paragraphs in the very first chapter. NASA astrophysicist Amber Strawn hopes Webb's discoveries will fill in the blanks. You're talking about potentially answering some of the questions that have occurred to people since the first people looked up at the stars. Absolutely. We don't know how galaxies got their start. We will hopefully be able to see those first galaxies for the very first time. And of course, galaxies are the homes of stars, and stars are the homes of planets, and planets, of course, are the homes of life. Webb's 18 gold-plated, hexagonal-shaped mirrors will align to create one giant mirror. It's 21 feet across, six times larger than the one on the Hubble Space Telescope. For more than three decades, Hubble has given us stunning, humbling views of the universe. But Webb will be a major upgrade. Like a night vision camera, this infrared telescope will search for heat signatures of the very first light after the Big Bang. Mike Menzel is the Webb's mission systems engineer. We're looking for some of the faintest objects that there are to see in the universe. In fact, we are looking for the faintest objects. To block the sun's heat from blinding Webb, engineers designed a first-of-its-kind sun shield the size of a tennis court. This is material, this is Kapton material that makes up those layers of the sun shield. This material here is about two thousandths of an inch thick. Yeah, it's amazing how much, how much responsibility something this thin has. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> right? yes, yes. And because that sun shield is so big, it and everything else had to fold up to fit inside the rocket. Once in space, Webb will carefully unfold and rebuild itself like robotic origami. It'll be two and a half weeks of high anxiety. <laughs> Project manager Bill Oakes. It's more complex than any satellite NASA's ever launched. It, it is hands down. If any one of 344 parts fail, the entire mission could be jeopardized. About one third involved deploying that sun shield. 1,300 feet of cables, almost 600 pulley assemblies, and it all has to work. A million miles out, something goes wrong, there's no call in AAA. No, that is no call in AAA, but I am confident that we did everything we could on the ground to maximize the probability of success of this mission. Webb's first image is about six months away, worth the wait for the chance to see baby pictures of the universe. Mark Strassman, Greenbelt, Maryland. A U of I professor and a graduate student will be some of the first people to get a look at those never before seen images. We spoke to that grad student who says this has been in the making for more than two decades. Like when I was a kid, it, the concept of this telescope was proposed and then it has been developing since then. And now I'm like a PhD student and middle aged man maybe and it's going to launch now. And he's looking forward because it'll help them see things in space that have not even been discovered yet. All right, Delina, coming off a good night in St. Louis. Yeah, I'm sure fans are still buzzing about that less than 24 hours ago. It was the third largest margin of victory for Illinois over Missouri. So a lot went right last night for the Illini. We'll break it all down and hear from Brad Underwood, Kofi Coburn, Trent Frazier about what went right at the Enterprise Center in St. Louis last night. That's coming up next. In
on the official television station of Illini Sports. This is WCIA 3 Sports and your Illini Nation. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> so much of Illini Nation shared Kofi's sentiment last night as Illinois ended Missouri's bragging rights win streak with one of their most dominant performances in the series. A lot of fans turned St. Louis orange and blue almost Literally, as the Enterprise Center had a big Illini fan base there as the neutral site. A lot of anticipation for the game last night. And Brad Underwood's team made sure they gave their fans a show. The Illini went on two different runs of 10 points or more, blowing the game wide open before Mizzou closed down the stretch. 25 points is the third largest win in Bracken Wright's history. It's special. Um, you know, me and Monte had a talk before this game. You know, it was one of the, you know, the Astro games on our on our schedule. You know, we had to bring it back to Champagne this year. You know, like you said, like our last time. You know, our opportunity. You know, to bring the trophy back. You know, it was. You know, it was. A lot, it was special to be out there tonight. We understand how important this game is to, uh, to our fan base, and it's it's. You know, the, the name of the, the, the game is exactly right, bragging rights, and it's such a unique event. Kofi Coburn led the way for the Alana with 25 points and 14 rebounds. Mizzou could not find an answer for the big man who had his way in the paint all night. One flying dunk in particular, though, sent the Enterprise Center into a frenzy, but it's just one of the things the Alana are used to seeing from Kofi at this point. You know, everybody sees his power and his aggression and his... his almost violence sometimes that he plays with at the basket. How athletic was that dunk? You know, he does something every day that you just go, no, oh, okay, I'm glad he's on our team because nobody else can do that. It was incredible, man, you know, um, it was a moment, momentum that we had. It was just like adrenaline, I think, like, you know, just coming down the middle, like, it felt really good. I'm um, enjoying it in the moment. It's gonna be a lot more of those. Ilana will head home now for Christmas before next Wednesday, welcoming Florida A&M to Champaign for its final non-conference game. And if you're looking for more after the big win, we've got plenty of coverage you can only find on WCIA.com. Check out the 3 in 1 podcast where we break down the game. Well, last night we told you about Brett Bielema lobbying on Twitter for Illinois to be the replacement for Texas A&M in the Gator Bowl, but it's not good news today. After reports last night, Rutgers confirmed today they are headed to the Gator Bowl to play Wake Forest. The NCAA announced today that the Scarlet Knights got first dibs because of their academic progress rate. They were the highest among five in seven teams. There's still a sliver of hope for the Illini, though. If another team has to drop out, they have the third highest APR score of the remaining five and seven teams. Well, NBA games well, all over the place getting postponed. They're still trying to persevere this COVID surge. Pacers hosting the Rockets tonight. They just got started a few minutes ago in the first. It is 12 to 8 Pacers in that one. No games tonight in the NHL, though, as at least for the next few days, they won't be playing. The league started a pause due to COVID-19 with plans to be back on Monday. So no Blues and Blackhawks tonight. All right, Andy, thanks so much. We'll tell you what new jobs numbers reveal about the Omicron variant's impact on the economy, plus this. You get a hot spice wine, cookies, it just goes together really well. Where you can go for a taste of Germany, Christmas in Germany, without leaving central Illinois.
Christmas coming up here as we look at some of the extremes for Christmas in terms of the warmest and the coldest. 63. Now, we're going to make a close run to that. That was actually just a couple years ago. Coldest. We won't even get close to that. Minus 15. Hey, rainfall, while I don't think we're going to see over an inch, we are going to see some rain there. And definitely this year, no snow. White Christmas, not a thing. But we had uh, five inches of snow back in 2010. We'll talk about when maybe we see snowflakes in our seven-day coming up. All right, we've got a bright spot for you tonight. Check out this pair of soulmates. Tammy sent this adorable picture our way. She says her grandson and pup Rebel couldn't ask for better friends. She says they're about inseparable. We want to see your pictures and your videos. You can email news at WCIA.com. You can also reach out on Facebook. We've got much more still ahead, including the latest breakthrough in the fight against COVID and Chicago's new vaccine passports for the new year. Stay with us. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6.30. Illinois' unemployment rate improved for the eighth month in a row. This is new at 6 tonight. The rate is now down to 4.5%. Champaign-Urbana's jobless rate is even better. It's 3.3%, down from 47 this time last year. On a national scale, the U.S. jobs market appears largely unfazed by the Omicron variant. New unemployment claims hold steady at 205,000. The four-week average rose a bit to just over 206,000. The historically low numbers suggest the Omicron variant did not spark layoffs right away. Overall, nearly 2 million Americans were collecting traditional unemployment and during the week that ended on December 11th. And some strong figures in the housing market. Sales of new single family homes rose more than 12% in November. That's the fastest pace in seven months. Analysts attribute the rise to low mortgage rates and strong demand. The median sales prices of a new home sold last month was nearly $417,000. That's 14% higher than a year ago. The Supreme Court will hear legal challenges to the Biden administration's employer vaccine mandate next month. The court scheduled accelerated timelines for a pair of orders issued last night. The move defers ruling on whether to block the new rules until after that hearing. Last month, OSHA issued a rule stating companies with more than 100 workers must require them to be vaccinated or undergo regular testing. The hearing is set for January 7th. The U.S. will now have two pills to use against COVID. The FDA authorized the pill made by Merck this morning. This could be available for adults with early symptoms who face the highest risks of hospitalization. It will include a warning against use during pregnancy because of the possibility of birth defects. This is a very promising antiviral and therefore uh, we want to make sure that production is ramped up as quickly as possible. 
The FDA approval comes one day after it approved the pill made by Pfizer. The Pfizer pill is expected to be used more since it does not have the same risks and it is three times more effective. As Omicron continues to surge throughout the country, some cities are introducing new mitigations. Chicago's mayor announced all bars, restaurants, gyms, and entertainment venues must require proof of vaccination. She said, quote, I've not been this concerned about COVID-19 since the early days of the pandemic. In central Illinois, McLean County reports more than 100 new COVID cases since yesterday, while Peoria County's tracked almost 300 new cases in the past 24 hours. But before any Chicago lookalike policies trickle down to central Illinois, Peoria's city manager says they'll wait and see and listen to the experts. I think that that it's really you know something that we would continue to monitor the the levels of, of positivity in our community and and you know look uh, to to hear the advice of our health professionals before we would do anything very similar to what Chicago is doing. He says there's no conversations about requiring proof of vaccination on the table as of right now. Democrats in Illinois' congressional delegation want Amazon to review its safety procedures. This comes after a warehouse in Edwardsville, Illinois, collapsed and killed six people in a recent tornado. Senators Dick Durbin and Tammy Duckworth, along with Congresswoman Sherry Bustos, are among the Democrats who sent a letter to the corporation supporting the OSHA investigation into that collapse. The letter asked for Amazon to inform its workers better and more accurately about its emergency plans in the event of a tornado. It also says some Amazon employees were not aware of any safety procedures. Hospitals in Rockford are feeling the strain of COVID. The mayor there hosted a virtual discussion with the head of OSF Hospital. The goal was to answer lingering questions and address concerns. They responded to someone who said hospitals financially benefit from COVID, saying the opposite is true. Hospitals right now are struggling uh, financially because of the COVID pandemic. And uh, I think that they're doing uh, everything in their power to maintain all their services, yet take care of the excess number of patients who have infections. The talk also broached on new treatments for COVID and a number of other pandemic-related topics. We may be in Illinois, but some holiday traditions are still best celebrated in the great outdoors. Plus, the successful mission to brighten a four-year-old's days in the midst of the toughest fight of his young life. Pain.
The news continues here on WCIA 3, your local news leader. For people in the Midwest, Christmas typically comes with cold weather, but despite the frosty air, many holiday traditions happen outdoors. WCI 3's Karina Rubio spoke with a business owner who's bringing a tradition that originated in Germany to central Illinois in this week's Culture Connection. It's no secret that beer is a big part of German culture, so it only makes sense that Riggs Brewery in Urbana has transformed their back patio into the ultimate Christmas experience. Every small town has a Christmas market in their town. It's like the town thing to do. That includes Caroline Riggs' hometown of Hartheim, Germany. She moved here seven years ago to open Riggs Beer Company with her husband, Matt. But Caroline continues to put little pieces of home into the business. Three years ago, we were talking about what we were going to do for our company Christmas party. And I said, hey, we should go to a Christmas market, but there was nothing close. The nearest one she could find was in Chicago. So in 2019, Caroline and Matt brought it to Urbana. COVID-19 canceled 2020's Christmas market, but they brought it back again this year. The whole atmosphere, when it gets dark, you turn on the little Christmas lights everywhere, you get a hot spiced wine, cookies, it just goes together really well. She says it's been a huge success this year with people visiting from all over central Illinois. They come for the bratwurst, crepes and drinks and even do a little shopping with vendors selling craft soaps, candles, wreaths and more. Christmas markets originated in Germany and some date back centuries with some of the oldest even in the 1500s and the 1600s and they continue to be a big family tradition for people all over the world. The pandemic has put a pause on the Christmas markets in Germany again this year so Caroline's father flew in to continue the tradition. The earliest memory was uh, to go with my parents to Nuremberg Christmas market is a very famous one in Germany Nuremberg and uh, it's the name is Chris Kindles Markt. Uh, and uh, I remember this, this was the first time my parents stayed with me in a hotel. He says the Christmas markets in his home country are extravagant. There, you'll find some of the biggest ones in the world. In Germany, it's about 2,500 every year. That's a number. And uh, in our uh, village, um, we have some wooden houses like here, like Carolyn has. And uh, they sell similar the same things. And to make the Riggs market even more authentic, he brought a little piece from home to add to the big glass Christmas tree. Glühwein, that's traditionally Germany, with I guess, a wine with some herbs. I thought I'd bring some bottles from our region. These are special bottles. That is from Franconia, the Würzburg area. Only this area is allowed to fill the wine in these special bottles. But no matter where you're from, Christmas markets are sure to get you in the holiday spirit. The Riggs Christmas Market has come to a close already, but if you missed it this year, don't worry. The owners say they're excited to bring it back next year. You won't want to miss some Marines making a young boy's wish come true. Plus, Kevin is back in to let us know how much longer we'll have to wait for some snow to show up in central Illinois.
South Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Lighty. Well, the winds are really going to be cranking out there as we head throughout the day tomorrow into the weekend as well. We're going to see those winds, I mean, upwards of 30, 40 miles per hour. Gusty, gusty winds are expected across the area. But along with that, we're going to see plenty of warmth as well. All right, let's take a look at the cloud cover on our satellite and radar picture tonight and we've got lots of that sunshine that's not going to be something you're going to see a whole lot of the next several days we've got temperatures though that are i mean it's still 50 in mattoon i mean it feels good outside readings tonight fading back down into the mid 40s here for um you know overnight lows that actually are not going to be moving a whole lot rain chances are going to be out there for us uh, some scattered showers around tomorrow and especially as we head into later on Christmas Eve night into Christmas morning. Things look to be pretty wet out there. So let's look at the highs tomorrow and we're going to be up near 60 degrees. I mean, that's going to feel great. Uh, these temperatures, though, are going to be varying from north to south. There's going to be a stationary front kind of draped across the area on Saturday morning, which is why it's making it so difficult for us to kind of come up with. Hey, what is the high temperature going to be? Because depending upon if this front is north or south, could have some big impacts there. You can see 61 in Effingham, you got 48 in Watsika. So some big differences there from north to south. The rain chances, again, I think best are early on Christmas morning. Look at those showers out there right along I-74 and I-72 down to I-70. Uh, a lot of that clears by the afternoon. So we could actually go from where we have rain in the morning to maybe some sunshine in the afternoon. So Santa coming in early will find those cloudy rain showers around early on Christmas Day as he grabs the milk and cookies there. Now, if you're doing your own traveling, you can see that much of the eastern two thirds of the country pretty calm. If you're heading to the, the western third of the country, though, and especially the higher elevations, you're going to be encountering some snow out there. Travel impacts could be high out there, but much of the Midwest is actually going to be uh, fairly calm for us as far as any major, major travel issues for us. Now you can see here precipitation wise, we've got or actually have precipitation chances that are pretty much every single day all the way through next week. High temperatures are going to be into the uh, mid and upper 50s for highs, though, through much of next week. So things are looking uh, pretty good for us there. Now, snow chances here uh, are going to be coming into play for us as we head into maybe next Tuesday. Jess, do you want snow? I would not be mad at snow. You would not be mad at snow? <laughs> no. Okay. I mean... Do I want a blizzard? No, but some snow. But okay. some snow would be okay. Yeah. Well, there's not going to be a white Christmas. I'm going to tell you that right now, but you may have a few snowflakes that can mix in there uh, next week, but we're not officially going to kind of slam that down as the forecast here just yet. All right, 45 tonight. How about 59 tomorrow? Fog, mist, and drizzle, and your seven-day forecast is going to keep things pretty active for us with several opportunities for rain. And again, maybe, maybe a snowflake next week but accumulating snowfall I, I i think we may come close to breaking the the record for the latest snowfall uh, to ever to ever occur we'll see if it happens if we make it to january 4th that'll be the case january 4th that's today yep. all right kevin thanks two students from decatur are headed west for the new year where you can watch them perform plus this it means the world to us meet illinois youngest marine how one group made a young boy's wish come true
is WCIA 3 News, your local news leader. A group of Marines, including several from Champaign, teamed up to make a wish come true. Gunnar Sadler is from Danvers, which is northwest of Bloomington. The four-year-old is fighting cancer. His wish is to become a Marine like his dad. The plan is on hold while he's undergoing treatment, so Make-A-Wish decided to do a wish enhancement. That's a way to give the family a boost right now. It means the world to us. I mean, this is just extremely, extremely difficult time um, to go through all of this. And we are able to stay strong for Gunner because of the support system that we have around us. Make-A-Wish put together the ceremony last week. Sadler got a challenge coin and certificate that recognizes him as a junior honorary Marine. Two students from Decatur will represent the Salvation Army at the Tournament of Roses Parade in California on New Year's Day. They'll be joined by other young musicians. You're looking at aerial video from last year's big event leading up to the Rose Bowl. We spoke with one of the performers, Sam LaRoe. He's a student at Milliken and works with kids at the Salvation Army. I'm very thankful for the work of the Salvation Army all through my life. Uh, they are, we have very strict like musical uh, curriculum, you know, that we come up through and uh, lots of great musicians have come through the Salvation Army and I uh, hope to be one of them. This will be his second time at the parade. Santana Neal Jr., a student at Eisenhower High School, is also going. If you're just checking in, we'll look at your top stories next. This is WCIA 3 News, your local news leader. We have some developing news to bring you out of Oak Brook tonight. That's a suburb outside of Chicago. Police say four people have been shot at a mall there called Oak Brook Center. They say one person is in custody. That was a live look from outside of the mall. A lot of police on scene. We'll bring you more details coming up tonight at 10. Again, that is in Oak Brook, Illinois, which is outside of Chicago. As for your top stories in central Illinois, today is Scott's Law Day. It's also known as the Move Over Law. The goal is to keep a emergency workers safe. The law says slow down and move over when you see a vehicle with flashing lights.
A teenager has been arrested after being shot on Tuesday. This happened in Champaign. An assistant state's attorney says 18-year-old Randy Willis was shot after he and another person got into a dispute. Surveillance video shows both of them firing. Willis faces charges of aggravated discharge of a firearm and aggravated unlawful use of a weapon. Here's what's coming up in just a few minutes on News Nation. Coming up on Dan Abrams Live, the jury finds Kim Potter guilty. A closer look at the results of the trial and what it could mean for future cases of officer-related shootings. That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation.